Hi everyone, it's Lisa from I Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel and thanks for dropping by. Now today I'm using a new cashmere fragrance. Well, it's new to me and it smells absolutely gorgeous. Now today's soap isn't particularly difficult. All of the hard work goes into making the embeds. Now I'm not using any moulds or anything to make these embeds. What I'm doing is making individual soap dough roses and rose buds to go on the top of the soap. And then I'm making some soap dough flower canes to go all the way through the soap. Oh, and just like a proper soap maker, I can now say that this soap is available to buy in my shop, should you want a bar. And of course, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Come on, let's go make some soap. For this soap, I'm going to be making some embeds the day before I make the main soap. I need some leaves and some stems, so I'm going to be using Emerald Lagoon from You Make It Up. And all I'm going to do is literally make a simple single block of solid coloured soap and then I'll let that saponify overnight as normal and then from that I'm just going to cut off the bits that I need to then turn into my leaves and stems. So the next day I'm just going to take my bar of soap and I'm sure you've seen me do this before when I want thin slices of soap. I just take a wooden soap mould that I've got and I pack it out with cardboard so I've got the right amount of soap sticking out of the top and then I just use a coping saw to slice off the thin strips that I need. Now although this is a coping saw, I have actually replaced the blade in it with a 22 gauge um, guitar wire. The rest of the block of soap I'm just going to wrap up and save for use another day. And then I'm just going to take one of those strips and chop it in half. And these are going to be, I want two leaves going through my soap. And I think half of this will be about the right height. And then to get the shape on the leaf, I'm just going to sort of file away at one of the sides to make it thinner at one end. And then I'll just gently bend it to try and get more of a curved shape for each of those leaves and stems. Now for the inside of my soap, I want to make a flower cane, so it kind of looks sort of like a rose, that type of thing. Now this is a technique that you see with a lot of polymer clays, um, and I have in the past seen people do it in soaps as well. So you need two soap doughs of different colours, and you need to roll them out very thinly. Now I find this easier to roll them out between sheets of plastic and I just have these plastic food bags that I reuse every single time and I wash them up and put them away and then I use them again and again. So I've got my individual colours rolled out nice and thinly so now I'm just going to place them together and then roll them again to make them even thinner and to also join the two colours together. And then I'll just cut off small strips of the double colour soap dough. And as you can see here with my first strip, I've put it back in between my plastic bags and I'm just rolling it and making it even thinner because I want to actually roll this one up really quite tightly. Thank you. 
Now, as you do this, it is really important that you can get, especially this first little bit of your roll, really tight. Because remember, if you end up with any gaps, you're going to end up with holes in your soap. And then once that is done, I'm just going to carry on slicing off individual strips and then just using my fingers to sort of flatten them out a little bit more and have them sort of thinner at the edges and slightly fatter in the middle and a bit of a curved shape. Then I'll just take a little bit of distilled water and use that to help me stick that petal onto my inside bit of soap dough. And notice here I am leaving a little flap bit sticking out because what's going to happen with that is as I get each of the next layers of petals done I'm going to start that by putting it inside the previous one and then wrapping it round. And then I'll just repeat the process until I've finished my soap cane. Now one of the things I do find a little bit tricky with this is trying to keep everything so it's a manageable size. These things aren't difficult to make but it's sometimes difficult to get them to be the right size that you want for an embed. So you do need to keep an eye on how big you're making these soap canes otherwise you end up with these really huge soap canes that basically take out an entire bar of soap. Which if that's the look that you're going for, so you want a great big flower in the middle of a bar of soap, then that's fine. But I want to have a couple of flowers going through mine. So the key to that is to be making sure that you've rolled this soap dough out really thinly and so that you can roll this tight and make a nice small flower. Now I haven't made these soap canes the entire length of my mould just because doing something that long is actually really difficult with this technique. So I've done slightly shorter ones and then I'm going to put a couple next to each other to fill the length of the soap mould. And then I'll just keep repeating the process until I've got enough soap canes to go through the entire length of my soap for my two flowers. So now I'm going to make some roses and rose buds to go on the top of the soap. So to make the individual roses, first of all I'm just going to cut some strips of soap dough. This is just really so that my petals are all sort of approximately the same size. So I've got some more very thinly rolled out soap dough and I've actually got my pink in two colours. This is the darker colour that we've got here on the screen now and then I'm doing a lighter colour as well. And then once I've done my strips I'm just going to cut out some roughly petal shaped bits of soap dough. Now don't get too fussy about it at this stage because we are going to squish and stretch these little bits of soap dough anyway. So I'll go through and do that for both of my shades of pink and then when I've got my petals all cut out I'm just going to keep them between those bits of plastic bags that I've got just to stop them drying out. roses I've got a little dome of soap dough for the center then I've taken each one of those petals and I've just squeezed them at the end to make them more petal shaped and a little bit curved and then with a little touch of distilled water I'm just going to take each of the petals and attach it to that center dome And then for those first four petals, I'm just going to go round and overlap each one. Now 
and then that will make the bud bit of the rose. And then I'll get four of the lighter colour petals and again I'm just going to sort of squish these a little bit and rub my finger over them to stretch them out a bit and make sure they're lovely and thin. And then I'm just going to take the top part of the rose petal and just bend it round a round thing. Um, it doesn't matter as long as it's fairly skinny, something like a skewer would be fine. And that should give us a nice little bend in that petal. And then I'll take those petals and I'll add them to the bud, again overlapping as I go through to complete that rose flower. And then I'll carry on doing the same until I have enough rosebuds and flowers to have one of each on top of each bar of soap. So now we can make up the main soap and I'm just going to do a single colour because I want the flowers to stand out really well. So I'm using Golden Shimmer from Mica Mama. And my fragrance oil is White Cashmere from Scent Perfique in the UK. And I've tested this in a small sample like I do with all of my fragrance oils before I use them. And you can see it discolours a tiny little bit. My soap battery is actually whiter than that sample. And so I'm happy that I know whether it discolours, I know if it rises and I know whether it's going to accelerate or not. So I've made up the entire soap batter that I need for the rest of my loaf. I'm just going to pour off a tiny amount because I do want some on the top for a little bit of piping for the stems and leaves of the roses. Other than that, I'm just going to add in my pre-dispersed mica into the rest of the batch and then just thoroughly stir that in. Now I am going to pour the rest of this soap in stages because I need to have some batter in to support the embeds before I pour the batter on top. So therefore I'm going to use the characteristics of the fragrance oil and the little bit of acceleration to help me achieve that. 
So all I'm doing at the moment is I've weighed my entire amount of soap batter and then I'll divide my fragrance oil out between each of the pores I'm going to do. And I'm only going to add the fragrance oil just before I pour each bit of batter. That way the rest of the batter will stay nice and fluid and the bit that I have in the mould will set up nicely and allow me to get those embeds supported before I pour the rest on. Now if you don't want to get involved in calculating how much fragrance oil to use for each individual pour, it doesn't really matter. As long as you share it out as accurately as you can, that's going to be fine. So I'll just pour that first amount into the bottom of my mould, allow it to set up so I can keep the flowers off the bottom of the soap. I'm going to pop the embeds in and then complete the soap. And I'm just going to pop this to some music so you can just see what's going on. And then I'll just finish off by adding the roses to the top. And then when my piping batter is set up enough, I'm just going to pop that into a piping bag with just a round nozzled tip on it. And then I'll use that to pipe the rose stems.
Then I'll just add in those little rose buds. And then finally I just changed out my piping tip for a small leaf tip and I'm just going to finish off by adding some little leaves. So that's everything all completed and now I'm going to force gel on mine by sea popping it as I normally do. Um, the reason that I do that is because I do quite a significant water discount. If you don't do a water discount you probably don't need to sea pop your soaps. But mine goes into the oven that's been preheated to 170 degrees Fahrenheit, 75 degrees centigrade. Turn the oven off as soon as the soap goes in there and leave it overnight. So I unmoulded the soap the next day and then let's get it cut. Now all of these bars are likely to look fairly similar. There might be some slight differences in the roses going through the centre. So I'm just going to do the cut on a few of the bars and then we'll just have a look at some final pictures. like the soap and you've enjoyed the video everyone. Thanks for watching, happy soaping!